My name is Ron Wilson. Uh, that's my English given name, and the tribal name is pronounced Siam Nesklawak. Um, I go by simply Longclaw. Uh, the tribal affiliation is pronounced Quagyulth, uh, not Quagyutl as you'll see in some of the older books, but Quagyulth, and that's a clan, not a tribe. Uh, that goes to northern Vancouver Island, BC, Canada. I do school programs and uh, camps and whatnot with cultural history, uh, traditions, a lot of hands-on activities with kids, uh, exclusively with Northwest Coastal cultures or First Nations. Um, after she retired, uh, they got to talking about this old story pole or totem pole that uh, they found sitting in, in a field uh, exposed to the elements for quite a few years, I guess, and they wanted to know if I could uh, come out and look at it to possibly restore it. George and Robin got a hold of me and I came out to look at it and I guess they say the rest is history. So, And for the coastal cultures, the story pole or totem pole is basically a public document of a wedding, a birth, a death, uh, naming a child, major life-changing events um, that the pole was a public document of that event itself. They're not prayed to, they're not worshipped, uh, they're not deities. Uh, it's like a, an English coat of arms. Uh, it's a, it's a, a story of the families involved and the hereditary crest. So if we were to look at uh, the Washington state, the state seal, the state bird, the state animal, those types of things would be involved. Um, so each pole basically is a story of a specific event. And so uh, getting uh, an official ceremonial blessing of the pole will happen later, uh, we hope in spring of uh, 2021, uh, where we'll bring out the elders and the eagle down and do a full-blown official blessing of the pole. Um, and the figures on the pole uh, do tell a story, so I'm still trying to do some homework on a more precise and accurate portrayal of what that story is. Here at Robin's Nest, um, the, the pole will, uh, I hope, be a permanent uh, feature, uh, which is a wonderful place that they've built here. And it's just delightfully decorated, but it's just a wonderful setting, and the landscaping is perfect for a pole of its size and color. We're hoping it will become a catalyst for traditions and ceremony, and um, I, I think that, especially in today's modern America, we need more formal gatherings to establish, especially with young people, that uh, tradition and there's a, a valid place for formal gatherings of families and relationships. Um, so we're hoping that, uh, again, later in the spring we'll uh, get involved with the local school and, and do a full program for the kids and involve them with some drumming and dancing and uh, get them out here and involved so that's a real keepsake and photo op and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, I, I think it's an important element, not just for the community, but for the kids to know that uh, there are things that are considered to be sacred. And with all the things now that we're talking about in modern America, we're losing the sense of what's important, what's sacred. It, it seems that too much is disposable. It's not religious in the sense of something to be prayed to or worshipped but it has significant meaning, uh, respect, placing a great value on something that cannot be replaced. So like a person's life, uh, children should be considered sacred. They, they can't be replaced. They are the future. They are a mirror. And they're teaching us as adults as much as we want to teach them because they're reflecting the world in which they live. So. The, the pole is a reflection of a period of time and what that time frame still has great meaning of manners and courtesy, issues of respect where relationships were lifetime commitments and that depth of value, great meaning that went far beyond just a personal relationship. I mean, land, how we treat the earth, I mean, it's all tied in. So. We're hoping that the poll here will become a catalyst for future events to help the community, especially with the young people, as to 
what do they have in their family backgrounds as far as traditions and customs, family recipes, uh, what a, what's an heirloom. So for young people to have a sense of value and to learn uh, what other cultures value so that when they go somewhere else, they have that sense of awe and wonder about, you know, why do they care about that? So when other people come here, um, they'll also get a sense of, here's what we care about. Whether you take off your shoes, whether it's a bow, may I, please and thank you, just a variety of old-fashioned concepts of courtesy and manners that that still matter. That, well, they should.